One of the really powerful things you can do with programming is generating your own meshes. This is used in a bunch of games, from Minecraft to No Man's Sky, to create effects like water or entire procedurally generated walls. So in this video, we'll start by creating our first mesh through code. But first, this video is sponsored by Spatial OS from Improbable. Spatial OS is a cloud platform that makes it easier than ever to build and host online games. It comes with a set of tools to host your game globally and deploy it within seconds. They just launched a really awesome integration with Unity called the Spatial OS Game Development Kit. The GDK comes with a FPS starter project and a set of pre-made feature modules that enable online gameplay out of the box. You get libraries for transforms, shooting and a character controller all working in a multiplayer environment. All the source is there and you can get started now building on top of the FPS starter project. It is completely free to download and start developing, but you will of course need a valid Unity license to use the GDK. So if you want to make your own online multiplayer game, simply click the link in the description and get started. Also, special thanks to Andrew Kilinenko, Art Armin, TrueVR Systems, Simmer.io, Alexander Blair, Cheetah3D, Weathermaker, and Infinity PBR for their support on Patreon. All right, let's generate some objects. So the first thing that we need to do is create an object for our mesh. To do this we'll go create empty and let's name it something like mesh generator we can also reset our transform here and we now need to add two components to this object we need to add a mesh filter as well as a mesh renderer the mesh filter stores the mesh itself which contains all the information about the shape of our object if we go in here we can see that there are some default meshes to choose from such as a cube a capsule a cylinder and a plane the mesh renderer is responsible for taking this data and rendering the object so we can actually see it. This is also where we can apply a material. So to generate our own mesh, we of course need to create a script that does this. Let's hit add component and let's create a script called mesh generator. And let's double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. Now, a mesh can contain a bunch of different data that affects our object. But the most important data, which we're going to focus on in this video, is vertices and triangles. In Unity, any mesh is made up of a bunch of points, called vertices. Each one of these vertices has a position in the world. If we look at a quad, we can see that it is made up of four vertices, one for each corner. And again, each vertex has a position. We can store these positions one after the other in an array. This is what we call the vertex array. Now, of course, objects in Unity are made up of more than points. We still need to fill in the shape. To do this, we use triangles. In the case of our quad here, we can split it up into two triangles. The first triangle is made up of points 0, 1, and 2. To show this triangle, we would add the numbers 0, 1, and 2 to another array. This is the triangle array. The second triangle is made up of point 1, 2, and 3. To also show this triangle, we add these numbers to our array as well. Notice how the two triangles have no problem sharing the same points. We'll probably talk more about this in the future. Now, there's one slight issue with the way we've set up our triangle array here, and that is something called backface culling. Backface culling is a process that eliminates the back sides of triangles. In other words, if a triangle isn't facing in the right direction, it's not going to be drawn. Most engines use this process for performance reasons, because normally there's no reason to draw the inside of an object. After all, it's not going to be seen. The way that Unity determines what direction a triangle is facing is the order in which we feed it the points of our triangle. In Unity, triangles are drawn clockwise. This is fine for our first triangle. Here we go from 0 to 1 to 2, which is in the clockwise direction. However, for our second triangle, we're currently going from 1 to 2 to 3, which is counterclockwise, and so this triangle is facing the wrong way. To fix this, we can simply reorder the points for our second triangle to something like 1 to 3 to 2. You can see we're now feeding the points clockwise. In fact, the order doesn't matter as long as it's clockwise. We could just as well input 2 to 1 to 3, and it would work great. Now I know this can be super hard to wrap your head around in the beginning, but as you start to experiment with it on your own, I promise it gets much easier to visualize. So inside of our script, we can now create two arrays. We can create an array of vertices, and of course each vertex has three points, so we'll make it a vector3 array, and let's call it vertices. We can also create an array of triangles, and this just needs to be an integer array. Let's call it triangles. Of course, we also need to create a mesh object. Luckily, creating a new mesh is super easy. Let's first create a variable at the top here that we can store it in. It's going to be of type mesh, and let's just call it mesh with a non-capital M. 
Then inside of our start method, we can simply set mesh equal to a new mesh. And that's all we need to do. We've now created a new mesh object. Of course, we also need to make sure to add this mesh that we just created to our mesh filter. And doing this is pretty much just as easy. We simply use get component to get our mesh filter. And we can then go dot mesh and set the mesh equal to the mesh we just created. I'm just gonna go to the top of the class here and add require component type of mesh filter. And this is just an attribute to make sure that there's always a mesh filter on the same object as the script, just so we don't try to add a mesh to nothing. Also, I'm just gonna get rid of the update method here. So now we're ready to create the shape of our object. Let's create a separate function for this called create shape. We then go void create shape. There we go. And inside this function, we can first define some vertices and then some triangles. To create vertices, we go vertices equals a new vector three array and we'll make sure to include the brackets. We then open and close some curly brackets and at the end of these, we'll add a semicolon as well. And if you haven't seen this syntax before, it's pretty handy. It basically just allows us to specify a bunch of elements we want in our array. So let's start by creating the first triangle here. For that, we'll need three points. So I'm gonna create a new vector three and this is going to be the first point. It's going to start at zero, zero, zero. And I'm gonna create a comma here and now we can take this and copy it and paste it two more times. And I'll make sure to remove the last comma here. So now we have three points, but they're all currently at the center. The second point here will offset by one on the Z. So we'll go zero, zero, one. And the third point, let's offset that by one on the X. So it's going to be one, zero, zero. And the Y is going to be the same for all of them. Then we need to specify some triangles and we'll use the exact same syntax for this. So we'll go triangles equals a new integer array We'll open and close some curly brackets, add a semicolon, and in here we can now specify the first triangle. So this is going to go from point zero to one to two. And that should actually be it. We've now added a triangle. However, we haven't actually told our mesh to use any of this data. Let's do that in a separate function. So we'll create a function here called update mesh, and let's put it down here. So void update mesh. And in here, we first want to make sure to clear our mesh for any previous data. So we'll go mesh.clear. And we can then simply input our vertex and triangle array. So mesh.vertices equals vertices and mesh.triangles equals triangles. It's that simple. If we save this now and go into Unity and hit play, voila! We're now generating a simple triangle mesh. You'll of course notice that it's currently lacking a material and so it shows this pretty ugly purple color. But to change this, we can simply go to the mesh renderer and choose a material. If we just choose default diffuse, there we go. It's now affected by lighting. Now, lighting is currently going to look a bit weird on our object. This might not be that clear here because we're just using a simple flat triangle, but if you create more complex objects, you're definitely going to see it. And even just by changing around the light here, you can see that it behaves pretty weirdly. In fact, it gets really bright when we shine it from underneath. The reason for this is that Unity uses another set of data called normals to calculate how lighting should look. We could create this data ourselves, much in the same way that we've done for vertices and triangles, but 99% of the time we can have Unity do this automatically, which is really cool. In fact, doing this is as simple as going mesh.recalculate-normals. And that's it. If we save that, make sure to assign a material again here because we assigned it in play mode and so it wasn't saved and play, we can see that already it looks much brighter because the light is actually shining down on the surface now. As we change around the lighting, it actually reacts to the direction in a fairly realistic fashion. Awesome. So let's add an extra triangle to make our object into a quad. Doing this is super simple. All we need to edit is the create shape method. In fact, for our vertices, we just need to add one more point for the fourth corner of our quad. So let's add a comma here. We can go new vector three, and this is going to go one on the X, zero on the Y, and one on the Z as well. And as for our triangles, as we talked about earlier, we now need to go one, three, then two. And if we save this and hit into Unity and play, there we go, we now have a quad. Pretty cool. And as with any other object, we can rotate it, we can scale it, we can move it around. It's basically a completely normal Unity object. We can even add physics to it without any problem. Awesome. And just to show you what would have happened if we didn't do the triangles in the correct order, say we just went one, two, and then three for the second triangle here, you can see the result is that we're only drawing one triangle 
And if I go ahead and flip to the other side, we can see the other triangle appears. We can also see that it appears completely black because Unity can't really calculate lighting on this because how do you light an object that looks like this? So yeah, we'll definitely just put that back. Awesome. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, if you want to make your own online multiplayer game, don't forget to click the link in the description and check out Spatial OS. Also, let us know if you like this type of more advanced tutorial. This is of course just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to mesh generation. There's still a bunch of stuff we could cover, like how to generate terrain or how to add color data to your meshes. So again, if you want to see anything like that, definitely let us know in the comments. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in September and a special thanks to Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, TrueVR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Fizzle Marify, Fang Su Long, Leo Lasset, Tintin Van Skewer, Sreyas D, Derek Heemskirk, Ronan, Tima Polderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Uwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Benia, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Corey Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.